All right, Shalom. Before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash, the wonders to the elders and apostles, a great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim Wa Akwath, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity. And today's video, a special one I've been uh, saving up. I have an entire, uh, you know, I actually got a whole multitude. I should probably do a, a series of these, but the, the, the wonderful world of animals dealing with the fact that. You know, see, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, he's such a demented creature that he tries to explain things through secularism, meaning what? Non-religious and non-spiritual. Well, the scriptures explain how everything came into existence. And we see that when you look to nature and you look to the natural creation of the Heavenly Father, you see how great his power is and his mind is by way of his creatures. To so have created such things that are capable of such things, all right, and what you should do, rather than to worship the creatures, that should inspire you to worship the Creator. Because if uh, if if the being is capable of some such, how much better is the originator of such? All right, and I just I just did my. Uh, we gonna go get that in, in wisdom of Solomon where it said better. So what we're actually gonna do. We're just gonna look at a compilation of uh, animals and them doing what they do. But I want to start here at. Uh, Let's go to Job because you can learn many things from animals. See, Esau Edom, uh, Edom uses them to try to, you know, oh, see, we come from that. We know we don't come. We don't come from them. They are what they are, and we are what we are. But the heavenly Father has created them. Some are for food. Some are for work. Some clean the planet. Some are straight up predators. You don't want to get near, nigga. Otherwise, ain't nobody gonna hear from you. You gonna end up in a couple of shit piles, right? So, and then they're, they're not meant to be in zoos and to just be house pets to feed fucking Petco bought goddamn pedigree, all right? When we get back in our rulership, we are going to be what? Job 5 and 23, it says, For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. All right, so when we get back to the sea, we're going to show Esau Edom how, how to interact with animals. Because the way that he interacts with them is fucking demonic. I want to get another one. Is that Job? Uh, let's see. Oh, 12. So when we get to the kingdom, we're going to be at peace with them. And we're going to be using them in their proper uses. And also, Job 12 and 7. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fish of the sea shall declare unto thee. So we're going to be back in order with the earth and there are lessons you can learn from animals you know hell you got certain fighting styles based off of the way that animals move you know so let's dive into it so the farmer just came here and told me a little bit more about border collies than i didn't know if you watch the one in the back just don't pay attention to my stick watch the movement that way if you look worry about this stick, just watching the movement. I guess this is the older one, and that's the young one. When this one ends up passing away, that will be the leader, and the pup will do the same thing that one's doing. Never watches the stick. Always goes up the lead. See that? Border collie lesson. So right there, right here, this is a, 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 a episode of learning. The way that that dog is on, the way that the dog in the rear is on the dog in the lead, that's how we supposed to be are in this truth. You know, behind the brothers and our elders and apostles giving us a good example. That dog in the back, he's not even watching the stick. He's watching his mans up front. And come to find out, this is how border collies are trained, right? That then that's that's some pretty cool shit. You know, they're just not, you know, mindless dummy things that are just roaming about waiting for you to slap him on the grill. No. All right. Esau, that's not Esau has disrupted the balance of everything down here. So you got, you know, you got motherfuckers that uh, uh, come and pick them up and eat them and they not meant to be eaten. These are for herding sheep. All right. We would have been using, uh, I'm not saying border, car, border collie specifically, but you have shepherds in the Eastern world. You have different kinds of shepherds, like Germ a German shepherd, literally, is a German shepherd dog. You have a 
Oh, what's those big motherfuckers, man? Um, uh, the ones that are in like Iraq and Iran, those motherfuckers are huge, bro. They look like little. They look like fucking <laughs> cars with some fur on them. All right, but you see right there, this you can learn. You know, from this is this is uh, to pay attention. You know that border collies in training, the same way that you would train up a child in the way that he should go, and he will not turn from it. All right. Let's look at uh. Right here. don't care. They fearlessly confront larger predators. They have thick, loose, and elastic skin that serves as a protective barrier against predators and snake bites. When threatened, they can inflate their bodies, making it harder for predators to grip them. They can withstand almost all snake venom. They take the bite, kill the snake, pass out, wake up, eat the snake, and continue with their life. Their strong jaws can crush bones and tough hides. They are skilled diggers, using sharp claws for hunting, and they also dig for water in arid regions. They exhibit problem-solving abilities and complex behaviors. Even his cocky walking he knows is him. There's one more thing. Honey badgers have a reversible anal pouch. When threatened, they push this pouch out of their anus, and the smell is so bad that it scares away most predators. So, you know, he's mixing a little bit of comedy. But right there, you see that the honey badger ain't nothing to be fucked with. That nigga got goddamn porcupine spikes all in him. He's still walking like it's just another day at the job. You know, what What can you learn from him? Hey, to be a bad ma, uh, <laughs> to be a, a relentless son of a gun, right? And, and more than likely, the opposition just going to want to leave you alone. But this is of the Heavenly Father's creation, all right? When, when Yahweh Shai and the elect... We're creating all of existence, all these animals, bugs, and creatures, insects, cells, trees, grass, that everything was thought of and put in its order, all right? These things didn't just come about randomly. This creature didn't randomly develop the ability, as you heard here, to resist uh, poison, which is true. You know, this one and, uh, what's that other fucker? Uh, mongooses. Mongooses, too, are uh, immune to most snake poisons. And, come, and, and coincidentally, who's their mortal enemy? Fucking cobras. And that didn't just happen because of evolution. The Heavenly Father set that up so they can be in balance. So, because if the cobras get out of hand in population, who gonna go run down on them? The mongooses. Kill them and call it a day, right? The Heavenly Father set all this up. Let's look at the eagle. Or the, the fastest animal on earth. The peregrine falcon. Top speed. Over 240 miles an hour in a stoop. Peregrines are so successful, they're found all around the world. Cliffs are their favorite habitat. They provide a vantage point to scope for food. And create updrafts that peregrines use to gain height where they strike from above. The success of most birds of prey depends on the mastery of flight. So right here, you know, the Heavenly Father created this creature and that mug can fly at 200 miles per hour. You know, you can't even shit. You know, we got to be in a car to do that. You know, see, here it is, the Heavenly Father. These creatures are able to do things that we need machinery and technology to do. All right, now, you know, the elect men are going to get that capability back. But here, yeah, motherfuckers like you saw, hey, these heathens, they ain't going to never be capable of such. But that that's a great feat, flying at 200 miles per hour, being able to see your target, you know, zone it, swoop in on it, grab it, take off, you know, put him down, right? This this is a uh, you know it's a it's a it's a niche area you know I know some of y'all probably don't give a fuck about animals. <laughs> certain Jay, all certain Jay care about is <laughs> Keisha and fucking and, 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 and Doritos, man. But for the uh, for <laughs> certain other of us, right? Uh, you know I I, I, ain't, I you know I'm, I'm talking shit, brothers. Don't take no offense, you know. But this is this is a uh, uh, see Esau has us in these cities. Focusing on, you know, drinking, partying, fucking hoes, Xbox. There's a lot more going on on planet Earth than 
a first world country in your fucking metropolitan area. There's a lot more going on down here. All right, I'll play another one. <laughs> Celsius. I don't believe they're dealing with degrees Fahrenheit. So if I remember correctly, zero degrees Celsius is 32 Fahrenheit. So 32 freezing. So out there it might be cold. It's just that freezing. So those bees were able to heat the house up to what 50 about 60 degrees. So outside it's freezing. In there it's about 60. If I'm if my if my math is math, oh it says 20 plus. So potentially 70. So I guess it's warm in that bitch, right? So how many of y'all knew that? That honeys can heat shit up. You know? How about that? And the scriptures uh, speak about bees. What do the scriptures say about bees, y'all? Let's get, uh... What is that? Chief? What is that? Is that Proverbs? Or... Let me see. Is it Sirach? Okay, yep. Sirach 11 and 3. Uh... It says, uh, now verse two, I'll just read that two actually, because it's gonna tell you why the bees mentioned. It says, commit not a man for his beauty, uh, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief among sweet things. So right here, the bee is being used as a comparison to show you what, don't just write something off because it may seem minuscule or minor. The same way a man, you don't wholly, you know, obviously, you know, you have the phrase judge a book by its cover, which is partially true. Meaning what? When you first see something or someone, you do examine it to see what's up with it. All right. But a man in general, you find out what type of man a person is when words start coming out of his mouth and you start to see their actions in contrast to their money, which here in Babylon and America and throughout the, you know, these carnal people, they judge people based off their po pockets, which leads to what? Respect to persons. All right, now, and, and taking it back to the bee, you know, bees ain't shit. Well, guess what? Bees can feed you with that honey, which can literally provide you a lifeline, keep you the fuck alive, and come to find out, they can heat up your goddamn house. So how about that? You know, here it is, Esau Edom got us paying heat bills. You know, all we need is a couple bees. Uh, uh, what was that? Some bees in the trap. You know, that raggedy bitch. Oh, who's that? Nicki Minaj, whatever, right? Fuck. Here it is, man. We could We could heat our house. Get some bees, put them in the lining, and we good. You know, just make sure them niggas don't get out, or we gonna <laughs> have to grab a couple cans of Raid on him, right? But you see, you see, all oh, this is a whole. There's a whole nother world behind TV, football, Hennessy. Okay, there's a lot more going on down here. Okay, so let me see. Okay, here we go. We'll deal with this one, actually. If a worker goes out and encounters this fungus, when the worker returns back to the nest, the guards, and they'll capture that worker that's infected with these spores, take the worker to a graveyard, and they cut off the worker's head, and then the two guards commit suicide. And they try to protect the queen and the nest and the colony from infection. And I discovered something that no one else had ever reported in the scientific literature about a biological switch that delayed sporulation, and then the insects were not repelled, but they were super attractive, which means one finds the fungus now and the others follow, and it ends up being a Trojan horse. The same fungi now are taken past the guards, given to the queen, the queen feeds it to the brood, the whole colony becomes like mummified with this mycelium, and whoosh, the whole colony the worker goes out and counter so right here you see that these ants you know uh, a cordyceps is another fungus that they will kill an ant if they detect it. you know walk that nigga off walk the plane but this is a particular fungus you know they realized dog had it they walked him out and they chose to kill themselves so rather than to infect the clan but you know apparently you know the fungus itself is intelligent so it had a way of being able to infect others but right here you see you know hey that that's the spirit of self-sacrifice you just learned that right there from the ant. That's some shit. You know, they said, man, you know what? Not only is we finna walk this nigga out the here, they killed him, put him down, and they said, we finna die out here rather than to walk that back. Hey, hey, what scripture is that? John 15 and uh, 
13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Even the ants understood that. They tried, you know, they lay down their life rather than let it get back to the clan, man. Come on, man. So these things are observable in nature. So what should start to happen in your head is like, man, well, wait a minute. These little things, you know, they, they don't have technology. They can't speak a functional language yet. How, uh, how are they doing such feats of, you know, speed, strength, and pulling off such, you know, intelligent maneuvers and whatnot? Let's go take a look. Right here. Wisdom of Solomon will start at 13. Uh, probably go 1 through 5. This is good. <clears throat> this is good. <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1. It says, Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of Yahweh, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. What's the works? The things that we see observable in this world. All right, and you have the phrase in the world, which came first, the the chicken or the egg? The chicken, nigga. All right, and who created the chicken? The Heavenly Father. An egg can't raise itself and heat itself up and, you know, all that shit. So then the same applies with humanity. What came first, the man or the baby? Well, the man, as it tells you in Genesis, the Heavenly Father, uh, he created male and female, uh, he, them, you know, or uh, Genesis 1, you got 1 and 27. So verse uh, 2, it says, But deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty hath created them. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. Con. So here it is. People worship the things of this world, sun, uh, you know, the moon, the water, you know, a, a, a dog, right? Well, if you like that thing, by logic, how much greater is it that created it? You know, that's what the verse is saying. Verse 5, for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionably, the maker of them is seen. But yet for this, uh, uh, but yet for this are the less to be blamed, for they peradventure air seeking uh the power and desires to find find him so right here so you know people are getting wooed off the creature you should get wowed or wooed off the creator all right you know hey look this is a longhorn cow you know it's probably down south somewhere or probably uh probably uh in the west like fucking wyoming or dakota or some shit uh but you know that's a crazy looking sight that motherfucker would Boy, your stomach not big enough to... That thing could impale through your whole body and just blow you through and keep going. Like, you, you get what I'm saying? That thing would impale the... Sh would knock your insides outside without a problem. All right, let's look at... Well, let's look at this. We got you got fish shooting fucking water bullets to get their meal. Oh, this, hold up, this is that nigga Super Ray. Hold up. And boom. Your ops done popped you in your ass. Oh my God. Physical therapy. Oh damn. You ain't make it there either. They was waiting on you. You got some art, you got some arch enemies. Yeah. These the archer fish. You you just you just a cricket man in your little cricket ass business, Jiminy! Wow! Pop you in your ass again. You gotta pay attention. It's from the bank. They be looking. They be watching. Jiminy. You sitting over there worried about some motherfucking Pinocchio. You need to worry about your motherfucking Nokio. Nigga. Wow. They done laid you out. The streets will do you bold. They eat you right on up. Mm-hmm. You better watch yourself now. And boom. <laughs> Hey, y'all know, hey, that nigga super, <laughs> he said, Jim Money, <laughs> we're right here, you know, so you see, here it is, we had to, it didn't took us all these years, you know, niggas didn't finally came about with guns, well, you got animals that sh shoot shit out they fucking face, that'll tear you up, hey, you, you have certain snakes that spit, uh, certain cobras, uh, spit poison, rather than having to bite you and inject in you, they'll shoot poison at the eyes of the creature, to blind that bitch, then they run down on it, and you you could imagine that's demonically painful, 
right? You got animals, uh, but it, it also, hey, it tells you animals in the psalm as well. You got uh, creatures spitting flame, you know, eyes uh, sparkling, right? So knowing that all these things exist, who created them? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So to whom goes the glory? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So that, you know, that's one thing that comes to mind when I see something amazing with the animal, something that an animal does or can do. It's like, damn, you know, the Heavenly Father thought of everything from the beginning and had his son execute, right? So that's about it. Y'all, let me give all praises to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem. Rakakwadash, the wonders to the elders and apostles, the great millstone. Uh, peace, blessings, and salutations all like the Akim wa Akwath. Learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. Hey, this could be, you know, this video could be hella long. You know, right? I got all kinds of these clips saved. Uh, and this right here, this is uh just with these bees. The bees are on the organic fruits, but they're not on the inorganic fruits, the GMO fruits. So what does that go to show you? Even the animals know not to fuck with GMOs. But what we eating? GMOs, right? So, hey. Uh, 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 oh, damn, I forgot to get that one. There's another scripture in Proverbs that says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Proverbs 6 and 6, right? So, you know, they're not just a bunch of dumb, mindless creatures. The Heavenly Father created them. So, hey, shalom.